Okay, now we have question number two from M1 uh, 2018, the GCE paper. Um, a particle of mass 2 kilograms lies on a rough plane. The plane is inclined to the horizontal at 30 degrees. The coefficient of friction between the particle and the plane is 1 quarter. So mu is equal to 1 quarter. Okay, so mu is equal to 1 quarter. Um, the particle is held in equilibrium by a force of magnitude p newtons. The force makes an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal and acts in a vertical plane containing a line of greater slope of the plane, as shown in figure 1. Find the least possible value of p. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw this. And um, as I said, I prefer to have the forces acting uh, or looking like this. I just redraw the diagram. So that will be how it looks for me. Just to make it a bit easier to um, deal with in terms of the resolving the forces. So I'm going to draw my force like that so it looks the same. And then I'm going to just get rid of all of this stuff here. And get rid of all of this. All of this. All of this. And this. Okay. So I know that the angle is 20 degrees. Okay. And that's my force P Newtons. Okay. So now, I've also got the weight acting um, straight down. I've got the reaction force acting perpendicular to the plane. That's a normal reaction force. And that's the weight. The weight, 2 kilograms, so this is 2 G Newtons. Uh, we have the component of the weight acting down the plane and perpendicular to the plane. So you have 2 G times, now this is your 30 degrees, so this is going away, so it's 2 G sine 30. And for this one, when you resolve this into the angle, so this is 2G times cosine 30 newtons. Okay, so um, we had the, the, the coefficient friction is a quarter. Now, the force makes an angle 20 degrees. That's okay, so we also got to resolve the force. This force is going to have a component which is parallel to the plane, up the plane, which is going to be uh, P times, now that's going away from the angle. If I resolve this force um, parallel to the plane, that's 20 degrees. That's going, now if I resolve this, this force, this is 20 degrees, hold on. This is 20 degrees to the horizontal, wasn't it? Let's look up there again. 20 degrees to the horizontal, so this, is, this angle is 20 degrees here. Okay, but this is 20 degrees in this direction. So if I resolve this one, that's pa that's parallel and that's perpendicular. Ah, so you've got to basically add this angle to it. Okay, you've got to think about this force. How is this force acting? Let's just... Okay, that's, that's 20 degrees here. That's 20 degrees. So I want to resolve it in this direction and this direction. That's what I want. This is where the force is acting. So I need to know what this whole angle is, which is 50 degrees. Okay. I need to know what the whole angle is here so I can resolve it in this direction and perpendicular to that direction. So basically, the angle that I need is this whole angle here. Okay. So that's the angle that I need. So I can, in fact, even get rid of this, get rid of this, Okay, I need this part. Okay, so this is the angle I need, which is 50 degrees. Okay, it's 50 degrees. If it's 20 degrees to the horizontal, it's 50 degrees to the plane. Okay, that's what I care about. So this is P times going into the plane, cosine 50. And this resolving in this direction, okay, will give you P times sine 50. P times 
sine 50. I hope that's clear for you. Slightly confusing in the beginning, but when you look at, you see, we need to resolve this force perpendicular and parallel to the plane. So I need the angle either, you know, from the line of force to perpendicular or parallel to the plane. So I know that the angle, if we go back to our original diagram, what's up in there? Hold on. Okay, I moved it somehow. Let's leave it as it is. Okay, ah, this is what I did. That's better. Okay, so now basically what I what I'm what I'm trying to say is is that this angle is twenty. I need to know the angle, the line of you know P is acting in this direction here. So I need to know the, the angle between P and the direction perpendicular or parallel to the plane. So we know that this angle is 30 degrees. We know that angle is 20 degrees, so the total angle is 50 degrees. That will be the angle of the line of action of P with a direction which is parallel to the plane. Then I can resolve parallel and perpendicular to the plane. That's my point there. So that's slightly something slightly a bit confusing about this question, but it's not that bad once you think about it. Okay, so now I have all the forces resolved perpendicular and parallel to the plane and now I can think about one more force that's needed which is the friction okay because it says it's a rough plane so the friction is going to act now it's saying find the least possible value of P the least possible value of P whoops okay now what, what does that mean the least possible value of P okay that means this has to stay in equilibrium okay this is an equilibrium okay as it says here okay it lies in a rough plane all right the particle is held in equilibrium so the least value of p is the value of p which will stop this from sliding down the plane okay if you have for example something that you got it's on a plane okay like a suitcase and you know if you imagine the force you have to apply to it to stop it from falling down the plane Okay, just like you're standing in an airport and there's like a there's a there's an incline that you're on. You've got a suitcase and you're trying to stop it from rolling down. Okay, so you have to hold it a certain with a certain force. Okay, that force is going to be less than the force required to push it up the plane. To push it up the plane, you require more force than rather than stop it from falling down the plane. So the least value of p will be the value of p required that that will just prevent it from sliding down the plane. If it said find the maximum value of P, then that would be the value of P required to stop it from just sliding up the plane. So in that case, if, if we're stopping it from sliding down the plane, then friction is going to be acting up the plane. We're trying to stop it from sliding down the plane. Friction is going to, start, is going to be acting up the plane, opposite to the direction of where it wants to move. And if it's on the point... Of sliding that will give you the, the you know the smallest possible value of peace just on the point of sliding okay it's just on the point of sliding okay if you if you um, took away the P all right if you made the P any less it will start sliding okay it will start sliding down the plane okay so we need to find F max okay and we know that F max is equal to mu times R so let's find F max first by resolving the forces perpendicular to the plane so we know that R is equal to P times sine 50 plus 2G times cosine 30. Okay. So R is equal to uh, P sine 50 plus 2G. Cos. Let's just write that equation as it is first. And we know that F is equal to a quarter times that. So F max is equal to a quarter times r all right let's leave it for that for now and let's resolve the forces as it's trying to go down the plane let's take down as positive okay we got 2g sine 30 okay and you got the forces acting um, parallel to the plane which is minus f max and minus p cosine 50 Okay, you can say two two sine thirty equals that plus that. It's an equilibrium. Two g sine thirty is equal to that plus that. All right. So now we need to find 
um, the least possible value of p. All right, so we can replace the f max with a quarter times this. Okay, so here we got 2g sine 30. That's like sine 30 is a half, so that's g. Okay, is equal to f max is a quarter times p sine 50 plus 2g cosine 30. Cosine 30 is root 3 over 2, so that's going to be g times root 3, you could say. Okay, plus p cosine 50. So now we can find p. It's the only thing that we don't know. Okay, so we could, um, I guess, multiply everything by 4. So you have 4g. I'm just trying to keep things exact until the end. P sine 50 plus uh, G root 3 plus 4P cosine 50. So we have 4G minus G root 3 equals P sine 50 plus 4P cosine 50. Okay, and I'm going to just continue down here, although I should really change, turn over the page. Um, so now what I can do is I can take P as common from these two. So I have 4G minus G root 3 equals P. And I got sine 50 plus 4 cosine 50. And then I can say P is equal to 4G minus G root 3 over sine 50 plus 4 cosine 50. I just tried to keep everything exact instead of using decimals and stuff on the way. So let's see how they answer. Okay, to find the least value of p. So you can give this to 2SF to 3SF. So let's just now put that in our calculator and work out what it's going to be. So you have your fraction. You have 4 times 9.8 minus 9.8 times root 3 divided by sine 50 radian mode degree mode good plus 4 times cosine 50 okay that should give us an answer which is 6.66 so p equals 6.66 newton 6.66 newtons you can write it to 2sf if you wish 6.7 newtons and you get your answer and there is the, that 10 mark question. So most of the marks I got here by just resolving the forces, but the important point here is you got to find the least possible value of P, which is the value of P, which is just enough to stop it from sliding down the plane. So it's like it's on the point of sliding down the plane, okay? And if you reduce P anymore, it will slide down the plane. That's the least possible value of P. Okay, if you made it any less than that, it will slide down the plane. Okay, that's why F has reached its limiting value because any reduction in p will cause it to slide down the plane all right um if that's suppose if we said find the greatest possible value of p so that it remains in equilibrium that means that's the value of p so it's just about to slide slide up the plane which is going to be a bigger value of p as common sense will tell you if you think about say a suitcase on an inclined plane so there we have the answer to that question